Hi there, welcome to another Friday Findings video. Much of the jewelry that I've made on this YouTube channel has had wire wrapping and quite a bit of that has been hammered. So I thought I would talk to you today about some basics of hammering wire. Now the thing that we love about wire is that we can shape it. We can make spirals and swirls, we can make frames, we can make pretty rigid shapes like bangle bracelets. We can shape it because it's bendy. Of course the problem with it being bendy is that well once we've got the shape completed how do we make sure it keeps its shape and doesn't continue to bend when we don't want it to and that's where hammering comes in and really there are two different reasons to hammer one is for strength hammering the wire whether you do it with a metal hammer or you can use a rawhide mallet, which I don't have, or a rubber or a nylon hammer, will work harden the wire and make it more rigid. But of course also when we hammer it, if we hammer it flat, like in these frames, we get a really great look and we also get the hammered texture. So you hammer to harden and then you hammer for the rustic look. So a few tips about using wire in your jewelry to make sure that it has the strength that it needs is to use the hardest wire and the heaviest gauge that will work for your project to start with. So like for these frames, this is, these are very heavy gauge, that's this wire, it's either 12 or 14 gauge, very heavy. Uh, for some frames you might want to start with half hard rather than dead soft but like you couldn't with these spirals you wouldn't be able to get that nice shape with half hard you'd have to start with dead soft so that's something to think about that obviously you're not going to use a wire like this 26 gauge for something structural no matter how much you harden it it's not going to be strong enough to hold much and even something heavier like an 18 or 20 gauge this is dead soft so you may need to hammer it a bit or harden it a bit in order for it to hold its shape so whatever your design try to choose the heaviest wire and the hardest hardness that will work for your projects and by the way wire comes in dead soft which is you know like this it's very flexible it comes in half hard which is springier and it comes in full hard which means you're not going to be able to manipulate it much at all I don't really use full hard now if you don't want to have this flattened hammered texture like we have here you can actually use nylon jaw pliers and if we pretend this piece is not something that is flattened we can just believe it or not just the act of squeezing it with nylon gel pliers which will protect the wire and keep it from being marred this will harden it so that it will be stronger and a shape like this isn't going to pull out of shape so nylon gel pliers are great if you don't want a hammered finish now if you do want a hammered finish like with these you would hammer with a metal hammer and that would flatten the cross section of the wire so like this is round wire and if I put it on an anvil and hammer it with the metal part you can see already that's starting to flatten out and when you're hammering you do not have to use a lot of brute force just a series of taps working it and this is already you can see this is already less bendy than this part it's already stronger and it's I've changed the shape However, if you want to harden it without changing the shape, you can use a nylon hammer or a rawhide mallet, and already this is a little bit stronger. Not as strong as the one that was flattened, but stronger than the area over here, just by the hammering, and I haven't changed the shape. Now these earrings are a good example of something else you need to keep in mind when hammering wire and that is that you don't want to hammer over intersections these particular loopy chandelier findings have a lot of intersections and you don't want to hammer over them because whenever you do the wire on top is kind of acting like a chisel 
to the wire beneath and eventually it will weaken it and break. So this is a good kind of project to use those nylon jaw pliers to strengthen something like that. And also a good example of using the heaviest and hardest wire that you can manage for the project so that they'll be strong. An excellent place to use hammering for strength is in ear wires. You can see that just the top of this ear wire has been hammered. So this part is very rigid. It's not going to lose its shape while the earrings are being worn. And then here's a piece that might give you a chuckle. It's one of my earliest wire working attempts. There's a lot I didn't know. I didn't know to use strong wire, so these are super flimsy still. Um, and I didn't know, it didn't even occur to me to plan ahead for these little beads that are within the spirals, which I really like the look of, but how do you hammer this to strengthen it? So there's, there's a lot wrong here. I could have used heavier wire, I could have used harder wire, I could have planned ahead a little better. But with the things I know now, I could use nylon jaw pliers to strengthen my spirals. But you do need to be careful if you have beads. These are all glass beads. These are lampwork beads that a friend made for me. And these are glass cubes. You know, you can't be hammering with anything too near beads, especially glass beads, because you'll crush them. So sometimes you may need to plan ahead in your design to avoid beads and intersections and get the look you want. So those are a few tips that I hope you find helpful for hammering wire and making your own jewelry designs. If you like this video, please make sure you've subscribed to my YouTube channel so you'll see more like it. And also check out the other videos up on the screen. And go see my blog, KeepsakeCrafts.net, where I have lots more creative ideas and inspiration. Thanks for watching. Happy creating. Bye-bye.